Home automation can be really great when everything works, and sometimes it can be a little bit painful along the way. Hey Raspy, turn all the lights to 100% brightness. All right. So every now and then, all the lights in the kitchen to 100% brightness. In the kitchen, that's kind of not what I meant. Today I'm going to look at the things that are working out with my home automation, some things that definitely need improvement, and I'm going to talk about some of the things that I think I'm going to change that hopefully can get me to a better acceptance factor from my significant other. We both did a poll and we both came up with about 30% as our current acceptance level for where we think things are. So I started like so many people started uh, many years ago with things like the Amazon Alexas and Smart Things. Those platforms were really good ways to start, very easy and guided you down the pathway of how to get up and running really quick. And they gave you a lot of pre-configured, pretty decent options. Unfortunately, something maybe around the 2019-2020 timeframe happened in particular to our Amazon Alexas, and we just noticed that the accuracy of them went really far south. That with the addition of cloud concerns and also what I would call really naggy upsells were something that we just decided, we've done enough of this. We're looking for an alternative. So we have started the migration process and we had a lot of little Amazon Echoes throughout the house doing a lot of the audio. And I do think they are really good speakers. Unfortunately, the voice assistant part of it is not good. And so I've been inspired watching a bunch of other videos on YouTube of people who've had amazing journeys and amazing demonstrations. And I have not been able to 100% replicate all of that. But I think there's some pretty key things at this juncture where I can talk about that might be common pain points that could help you. So one of the things that we've done is we've got this little S3 box. This is talking to our home assistant and our home assistant is plugged into our Alama and that is talking to one of our LLMs. In the back end, this gives us amazing capabilities that we didn't have with things like the Alexa just off the bat. So I can ask it things like, hey Raspy, if I eat 14 pounds of potatoes a day, yes or no, I'm gonna be in good health. It's slow though. You're gonna notice this. I'm hesitant to say anything else because it's probably picking this up also. It turned the lights off. This is what I'm talking about. There's been a lot of things that I can only- Eating 14 pounds of potatoes a day is not good for your health. In fact, it's extremely unhealthy and potentially life-threatening. Potatoes are high in carbohydrates and can cause weight gain, insulin resistance, and other health problems if consumed excessively. It's recommended to eat a balanced diet with a variety of foods, including vegetables, fruits, whole grains, lean proteins, and healthy fats. So I'm not sure why it turned off the lights to tell me this also, but maybe that was an ominous forebearing of what it anticipated would be my ultimate demise and a foreshadowing to its negative messaging. <laughs> We used a Hue system in this house. We have about 50 devices connected to it. So that's quite a few lights and switches. And we imported those directly into Home Assistant. And that I think is one of the root causes of so many of these problems because the Hue Hub is still in play. It did give us a lot of convenience bringing in scenes and things like that. So we didn't have to recreate a bunch of things, but I think I'm actually gonna have to disassociate these bulbs and bring them back in one at a time on a room by room basis. That's gonna take forever. But I think that's one of the big things that just right off the bat could improve our experience. When we moved from the Alexas over to this little box that I would only say has questionably uh, slightly decent speakers and definitely not good on the audio if you are not close to it, that has been another pain point. Do not, in my opinion, go out and get this box unless you're looking tinkering in other things. And the reason why is because it is basically a dev device. The cool part is it's going to be useful for me in two other scenarios that are Home Assistant related, but I am not going to use this as a primary voice interface. It is painful. Uh, it will be good because it comes with an IR base for me to use it outside of that. 
and I do plan on putting it into the well house where I have a well saver. The well saver emits IR codes that give me about as much information as I would ever be able to find out about the status of my well. And I plan on using a second one inside the interior well room for monitoring and taking re readings every now and then of a couple of devices in there. And so this comes with breadboards, so you can break it out, wire it up, and hook it to a lot of different sensors. And that right there is a pretty good use case for it. But definitely, as far as an audio assistant, I would say this one's not scoring very high on the quality. And there is a new product that's gonna be launching this December 19th from the Home Assistant team that I am definitely looking forward to. Another thing that I've been using is the Raspberry Pi 4. I think these are a little bit slow when you get into, you know, 100 plus devices. I've noticed a lot of crashes on this, in particular in doing the TTS. Now offloading that to individual devices, I think should speed things up quite a lot. There is finally a new Olama runner out that they have. I'm gonna put together a video shortly to show you how to do that. This will allow it to run on CPUs like small board computers that do not have AVX extensions. That, I didn't ask it for the help. You see what I mean? This is why we're at 30% in the house right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug this so that this doesn't keep happening, but you can see how that's a disappointing experience. Running in the Raspberry Pi ecosystem, of course, is something that kind of is a staple for a lot of people that are running Home Assistant, but yet, I think it's a better recommendation to run this in an LXC. It also overcomes so many of the problems that you have if you're looking at doing things like Whisper and you wanna run it locally on your individual machines and you wanna have lots of satellites and the Wyoming protocol to have lots of them out there that are small, low power devices. I'm gonna be using Zima boards myself because each one of those will be able to have a small, low power GPU plugged into it and do local inference. That way I can have a truly highly available system And one of the next things that I think has really stood out at me as being a maybe not pain point, but you need to start with a plan or you need to be willing to understand that you're going to have to change quite a few things. Home Assistant is a very blank sheet. It is something that without some planning going into it, creating dashboards that make sense, creating automations that make sense, may not jump off the page at you. So that's another thing that I think is a very good consideration factor. If you go into it and you just import everything from your smart things, from your Hue, it's gonna kind of create a little bit of a mess. That's a very fast way to get up and running. And so I actually kind of want to recommend that you start like that, but you also start with a plan that is you're going to tear it down and you're going to do it right sometime in the very near future or else you're probably gonna end up not very happy with it. That's my takeaway on it and I'm sure that a lot of other people have ran into similar experiences as I have with Home Assistant. The device that I'm using isn't great but it's doing good enough for now that I may stick with it. It's one of the Nortec devices so it is older I don't know if it's gonna work with future devices, but most of the devices I have right now, door sensors and everything is a little bit older. So I'm not seeing that there's a huge amount of things that I have that are gonna require something new, but everything I buy from here on out probably will. I look forward to reading your advice and recommendations on that. There's something really cool though about being able to run your own internal LLM as the brains interfacing with so many of the devices in your house. So I hope that some of these recommendations make sense and you probably could have as much or significantly more even experience with Home Assistant than I have. So drop any helpful tips, tricks, anything like that that you have that could help my experience get better and make sure to check out other people's comments down below. While you're down there, if you enjoy content like this, be sure to hit the like and subscribe. Hey Raspi, tell everybody to have a great day and that we will see them next time. I'm sorry about that. It looks like I made a mistake with the media playback controls. Let me try again. Here's a message to send to everyone. Hey everyone, just wanted to say have a great day. We'll catch you all next time.